everybody and welcome to Disruptive Education. This is Pradeep Mal, Ambassador of Change from Getty, the Global Education and uh, Training Institute from Lucknow. And we thank our mentor, Dr. Sunita Gandhi, for this excellent format of Disruptive Education that she has provided to us, where we are able to meet with and interact with uh, people from India and all over the world in the education field, all eminent people. And we've had more than 575 such interactions till now. And today we are very happy to have with us uh, Madam L. Nirmala Kumari. She is the principal of the Prasadhi School in Bangalore, Karnataka. Uh, she has an experience of 33 years. She has an MA in English, an MA in Hindi and a BA. She is passionate about teaching and learning, and especially the new methods of uh, teaching. And as a principal, she is very friendly and is approachable by nature. She will be speaking on perceptions about relationships around schooling. Thank you, ma'am, for being with us. Over to you. Happy evening and a happy new, new year to all those who are a part of today's session. At the outset, I would like to congratulate and salute Team Getty, the Global Education and Training Institute for their remarkable contributions to the cause of disruptive education especially during a pandemic situation like this. Hats off to you, Sunita, ma'am. I'm very impressed with the key values that they stand for. Learn, teach, and share. These words speak volumes to the teacher community in general. I feel this threefold path when followed is sure to lead every teacher on the path of success. A teacher has to be a lifelong student and a willing learner throughout the career. Equip oneself to teach effectively and the most important of all, always be ready to share whatever is acquired through the experiences so that it benefits the whole of the student community. So let's get started without any further delay with our today's topic. Perceptions about relationships around schooling. Perception. What does it mean to perceive something? It's to understand or become aware of something or whatever we experience through our senses. It's a mental impression. When we talk about students' perceptions, it refers to thoughts, beliefs, and feelings about people, situations, events, etc. around schooling. Schooling is the most cherished phase of one's life. It is the time when every student gains some of the most valuable learning experience, which in turn sets a strong foundation for one's inner compass as they navigate life. This in turn reflects everywhere. Could be at the university, the workplace, family, neighborhood, society, and so on. A relationship is a living entity. It takes a degree of awareness, willingness, and commitment to keep it healthy and private. Which are the relationships that are woven around schooling? Parent-teacher, student-teacher, student-student or the peer group, and of course, the whole cycle, that is the administrator, the administrative staff, or it could be the students, parents, teachers, the transport, the library, the substack. So it includes everything. Home is the first school and parents are the first teachers. When children enter the school, it becomes their second home and the teachers become their extended parents. 
So the school and the teachers have a huge responsibility because they play a significant role in shaping their personality and in their all-round development. To quote Mahatma Gandhiji, by education, I mean an all-round drawing of the best in child and man, in body, mind, and spirit. Parent-teacher partnerships. There, there's a lot to speak about uh, this, but I have confined it to the three C's. Communication. Meet parents on a regular basis, both formal and informal, because a parent who wants to share about either the learning disabilities, behavioral problems, or weaknesses of his child may not feel free to do so during a parent-teacher meeting. Appreciate the parent and give them the credit if you notice even a slight improvement in the performance of the child, saying, this wouldn't be possible without your efforts. This will result in improved educational outcomes of students. Communication. Communication through a phone call to a parent must always begin with a pleasant note. The parent must not panic that it could be either a medical emergency or a complaint about the behavior or about the poor performance in academics. Special calls can be made occasionally just to inquire about how the child is doing at home or if the parent needs any kind of help from the side of the teacher. This will help in removing the general phobia that the call from the school is always a negative remark about their child. I wish I had learned this earlier. Consistency. The, meanings, the meetings can be consistent throughout the year. It should be made a routine not like our new year resolutions, which is high in the, uh, like on the first day and fades away gradually. Mutual respect and appreciation for the efforts taken in molding the child into a knowledgeable and a good human being must not be missed out. Provide information regarding what's going on in the class or about the active participation of the child in the classroom or so the school activities. Collaboration. A collaborative, cooperative effort is always paid off. Listen to the parents and know more about their skills, interests, etc. And invite them when there is an opportunity for them to showcase their talents. This will bring a sense of belongingness. For example, at the pre-primary level, Grandparents can be invited for a storytelling day. The same way a sports personnel can be invited as the chief guest for a sports day. Include them as members in the parent engagement committee and take their inputs. Thanking parents, both personally and publicly, for their support is again very important. Maybe you can thank them during the annual day celebrations or during a parent-teacher meeting. Teachers who are looking at this slide might think that I'm asking them to be a unicorn. And while this is a lot, this list of qualities are what I've seen most committed teachers embody. Kids don't learn from people they don't like. This is so very true and I'm sure each one of us have experienced this irrespective of the age group the child is. Whether it, the child is from the nursery, primary or the high school. When a parent asks the child to either complete the homework or study, the child will automatically pick the subject of his or her favorite teacher. If you have to create interest in the subject, show them unconditional love. 
students may forget what you said but they will never forget how you made them feel one of my students whom i have taught years back met me recently she recollected a small incident on the first day of her school high school since it was the very first class for the academic year i had asked the students to introduce themselves when this particular girl stood up i had commented saying hey i looked exactly like you in the school in my school days it seems she felt so proud and happy about the fact that she you know her teacher looked like her and she had shared it with most of her friends the whole of that day so she said she also cherishes that moment even now i'd like to throw light on some of the important qualities of a teacher like being a role model creating a learning environment classroom culture involving students in planning and excavating the talents in every child being a role model is the simplest way to inculcate the toughest practices i repeatedly quote this to both the teachers and the parents children don't do as you say they do as you do this may sound simple but very hard to accept and practice children don't do as you say they do what you do for example if the teacher is not punctual comes late to the class but advises the student you can imagine what impression is created in the mind of the student the same is the case with a child at home you ask the child to study and if you are watching the television it will not work creating a learning environment both at school and at home is more effective in the learning process and increases the curiosity in the subject classroom culture i would like to play a short video to show how a classroom culture can be developed it's a major piece for kids to have a safe and predictable environment if we create that culture where they know that we love them and we know that we believe in them that's like vital to the closing the achievement gap. The first thing that I do every year is we start by kind of creating that family atmosphere within our within my classroom. Um, and by doing that, we do family greetings. So the kids actually interview each other, asking like, what's your favorite color? What is your favorite game to play? How many siblings do you have with really simple questions? Um, so they kind of can create that common ground between the two of them. And then they always, um, have to kind of point out the commonalities like what did we have in common what things were the same between the two of us um so they get to interview everyone in the classroom throughout um the first month of school and i think that kind of just starts by creating that sense of family that classroom culture that we're really looking for i want the kids to know that it's a fresh new start so every morning i greet them with a handshake um in the doorway with a handshake eye contact, a smile, um, and we practice that a lot at the beginning of the school year and they know to respond to me with a handshake, a eye contact, and a smile, and a greeting as well. Um, and it's kind of letting them know that whatever happened earlier in the morning, um, you can forget, and this is a fresh start. You're safe in this classroom. Um, we're a family in here. We're going to take care of each other, and it's kind of that fresh start for the day. It's great to have within classrooms. Um, the classroom culture piece and having that family, but it's even more effective if you have it as a whole school. Um, so really implementing it in every classroom, making sure every classroom is feeling safe, making sure as a whole school, um, you know, you're able to go up to students and talk with them and interact with them and they feel that safe 
environment wherever they are in the school, not just within your own classroom. My first teaching job um, in an urban setting, I could feel the, the love that they had for me when I was giving the, you know, the consistent expectations and providing that safe environment. Um, and I, I just saw them flourish so much. In the beginning of the year, there is, you know, a lot, maybe kids are acting out or struggling or kind of trying to figure out where they belong. But because we create that classroom culture and they know that we're all a family, you kind of see um, day to day that behavior dwindle away. We've seen it in our test scores, our growth. Um, every classroom in our school has that classroom culture piece where we've really made it a family um, atmosphere, a safe, predictable family atmosphere. I think because they know it is safe and predictable, all of their focus is on their academics. I think this speaks everything about the classroom culture. Involve students in planning all the school activities. Most often, you might have noticed that ensuring responsibilities to the students rather than you training them completely might show better results. Respect and accept their ideologies, new ideologies, which will certainly boost their self-confidence. Excavate the talents in every child and help them succeed. You must have read this. This is one of my favorite poems for the message that it leaves. The Mountain and the Squirrel, written by Ralph Waldo Emerson. The mountain and the squirrel had a quarrel, and the former called the latter little prig. Bun replied, you are doubtless very big, but all sorts of things and weather must be taken in together to make up a year and a spear. And I think it no disgrace to occupy my place. If I am not so large as you, you are not so small as I, and not half so spry. I will not deny you make a very pretty squirrel track. Talents differ. All is well and wisely put. If I cannot carry forests on my back, neither can you crack a nut. Every child is a beautiful flower in the garden of God. Everything, whether big or small, has its own place in the world. Everything in nature adds variety and beauty. And children are the most beautiful among God's creation. Here's a video of Clint Pulver, who owes all his success to his teacher, who identified his talent at a very early age and motivated him to reach such great heights. Clint Pulver is a motivational keynote speaker, author, musician, and workforce expert. He is also fun, dynamic, entertaining, and the no stress speaker clients love to work with. I had a lot of memories from when I was a child. One that's always stuck out to me though was when I was about 10 years old and I was in school and I struggled. And I, I didn't struggle with English, math, or science. I struggled holding still. And I would try to listen and focus and process ideas, but I couldn't help myself. And to be honest, I would sit there and then I would just start tapping. And the students in the class would look at me and they'd say, hey, stop tapping. A lot of the time, I didn't even realize I was doing it. And then eventually even the teachers got after me and they would yell at me and they'd say, Clint, you have to stop tapping. It got so bad that I got sent to the principal's office for tapping. And he said to me, okay, maybe when you go back to class, just try sitting on your hands. And so I did, I went back to class and when I felt myself starting to tap, I just, I did this, I sat on my hands. And that worked for about five seconds. One time I was tapping in class and my teacher, Mr. Jensen, he looked at me and he yelled. And he said, Clint, stay after class. And I thought to myself, this is it, I am done. Now I've always been the type of person that believes that a single moment in time can change a person's life. And this was one of those moments for me. And I will never forget it. And so I was sitting there with Mr. Jensen and an empty classroom. And he walked past me and he sat next to his desk and he said, Clint, come here. I want to 
talk to you. And as he looked me right in the eye, he said, now I need you to know something, you're not in trouble. But I do have just one question that I have to ask you. And he asked, he said, have you ever thought about playing the drums? And in that moment, Mr. Jensen, he leaned back and he opened the top drawer of his desk. And he reached in and he pulled out my very first pair of drumsticks. And he held them in his hands and he looked at me and he said, hey Clint, you're not a problem. I think you're a drummer. moment on, I've never put those sticks down. I've toured, recorded, and played drums all over the world. My whole college education was paid for with drumsticks in my hand. Just because of a single moment in time when somebody believed in me, and he saw something in me that I didn't even see within myself. And from that moment, I learned that there's a difference between being the best in the world and being the best for the world. So that was very nice to see how a teacher can excavate the talents in a child and help them build up on that. Student-student relationship. Show me your friend and I'll tell you who you are is a common saying. Because people with common interests always gel well. Student-student relationship or the relationship among the peer group is equally important, unlike the teacher-student relationship, as it provides emotional support and makes them strong. Group project works can bring better understanding, build team spirit, and help in bringing out the best in them. Extracurricular and sports activities also build stronger relationships. Curriculum related topics assigned for group discussions or debates foster a healthy competition. Changing the seating arrangement frequently so that the students mingle with everybody and do not face adjustment problems. Small groups organized under a mentor supervised by a teacher also can help in the teaching learning process, thereby helping them to excel in academics. We observe that some of the students who are shy natured prefer to get their doubts clarified with their friends rather than the teachers. So when they come together, stay together and work together, there is definite but definitely that is going to be, you know, a success. They are going to meet with success when all this happens, when they come together, stay together and work together. This not only applies to the student community, it is to an institution anywhere. This should be the mantra. The administrator, teacher, student relationship. Again, this comes a uh, constitute, you know, the whole circle is very important to build stronger relationships, whether it is between from uh, you know, starting from the administrator to the admin administrative staff, the teachers, the library, the, you know, the students, the transport parents. So there should be a perfect coordination among all the, not only the administrator who, you know, of course, this uh, constitutes the school culture. So it revolves around all these stakeholders. There has to be a perfect coordination in the chain of relationships involved. How to be an efficient administrator? Respect and execute the policies framed by the school authorities effectively to build and keep up the school culture. Make yourself available to the teachers whenever they need you. Provide guidance and support in all matters and treat them as your own family. Allow teachers to act independently. Listen to them, welcome their new ideologies and consult them before taking certain decisions. 
empower the teachers through trainings to update themselves so that they face the children with more confidence i'm sure some of us learned now for the first time to ha uh, to handle an online class and proud and happy to say that our teachers have mastered these skills in a very short time need is the mother of invention right building team spirit is again very important they should exist as one single entity in the school without any differences informal meetings team outings or uh, dinner together may be helpful in achieving this timely evaluation of the teachers competencies is a must applaud the outstanding teachers openly it could be through words of appreciation a short email a certificate anything don't fail to boost the morale of the team as a whole when it comes to relationship with the students normally it's not a cordial one and there is a wide gap seen and their association is limited focus is on safety and school improvement quite often greeting the parents or students by their names or surnames makes them happy and they feel connected the school atmosphere must be welcoming the staff must have pleasing manners and must be easily approachable it is important to listen to their grievances and resolve at the earliest most important of all is the assurance to the parents that they have made the right choice in selecting one of the best institutions to educate their child so the anticipated outcomes are more engagement in learning you see the students engaged more in learning there is academic excellence they behave better in the class and there is social and emotional development to sum up the ultimate goal of relationships around schooling is to support every child in discovering and living their highest potential i'd like to share a small clipping about four true rules to success from dr apj abdul kalam we should know how to handle not only how to handle the success how to handle the failures particularly you are in the management environment warton it i want the young people to understand how to manage the failure because any task you do you have to come across problem problem should not become the captain of the individual or the project chief the project chief should become the captain of the problems and defeat the problem and succeed learning learning gives creativity creativity leads to thinking thinking provides knowledge knowledge makes you great history has proven history has proven that those who dare to imagine the impossible are the ones who break all the human limitations in every field of human endeavor whether science medicine sports arts or technology the names of the people who imagine the impossible are engraved in our history by breaking the limits of their imagination by breaking their limits of their imagination they change they change the world you take cv raman you take uh, newton you take einstein you take chandrashekar they by breaking the limits of their imag imagination they change the world if you want to be discoverers if you want to be innovators i am going to give you what type of what type of characteristic 
you must have invention and discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imaging the outcome the telephone he was imaging the outcome imaging the outcome in the mind with the imaging and constant effort all the forces of the universe work for that inspired mind thereby leading to invention discoveries so i would like to hear from you a few tips for the upcoming generation to succeed in life well succeeding life i have already told you yes sir you all have to do four things okay number 1 great aim great aim i will have great aim i will have great aim i will i will continuously acquire knowledge continuously acquire knowledge oh i will do hard work i will do hard work i will persevere i will persevere and succeed and succeed okay that's the mantra thank you sir thank you so much so i think these mantras must be followed by all of us to be successful i sincerely thank sunita ma'am and pradeep sir for inviting me to share my ideas i hope there is some takeaways for the audience Thank you so much, ma'am, and uh, we thank uh, Nirmala Kumari, ma'am, our principal of the Prasidhi School in Bangalore, Karnataka, for this excellent talk on perceptions about relationships around schooling, and uh, she dealt with it very well, from uh, uh, teacher, student, student, students, etc. It's very, very important to have these perceptions very clear about relationships in schools. and the limits of these relationships uh, we once again thank uh, dr sunita gandhi for this excellent format of disruptive education and good evening and goodbye for the present meet you in the next disruptive education program thank you so much and goodbye <laughs>